here we are. I mean, it's a great network, this. It really is. And Richie, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm grateful uh, for you inviting me. Uh, Richie came on a retreat in the summer that we had. Um, am I doing something wrong? Oh, it's okay. You forget right. it. Okay. And it was called The Joy of Encounter. And on this particular retreat, we had people from the margins of society. We had people with an addiction, uh, a history of addiction, homelessness. We had some asylum seekers. But the, the key to the success of the retreat was our willingness to get alongside of people to relate, you know? And building on what Sharon was saying, I would say that there's only one of us in this room, ultimately. You know, when you get on a spiritual program, you come to discover that we're all the same. And the, the truth of that perennial wisdom, you know, the golden rule, what we do to someone else, we're actually doing one ourselves. And that's consistent around all the wisdom traditions around the world, you know, so it really matters how we interact with other people, it really makes a difference, you know, we can make a massive difference to somebody just by smiling at them, just by remembering somebody's name, just by looking at somebody in the eyes, and especially people who aren't used to that, who might have been knocked down by society. Now in terms of relating as well, we all have been through the COVID experience and we all went through the opposite of relating and being in community together. Isolation, the lockdown. I remember two years ago, when it, you know, November time, it gets dark at four o'clock, doesn't it? And we're all locked in our own little bubbles. So we know that. Now, Kat's here from, from Saltburn and Part of the Saltburn community response, which was brilliant, it was really brilliant. And there was, um, I remember doing an online kind of meeting with Dr. Julian Abel, who talked about compassionate communities. If you've not discovered his work, I would heartily recommend compassionate communities. Now, at, at the, the weekend, I was rudely awakened at half six on Sunday morning by Radio Tees, who wanted to do an interview with me about kind of what's going on politically at the moment. You know what? <clears throat> There's an actual department in Westminster that's looking at developing compassion in politics. Wouldn't that be great? Can you imagine Boris Johnson and his ilk genuinely, and I mean genuinely, not trying to feather their own caps or nests, but actually thinking altruistically, and going for the greater good, you know, the greater good of all. So for me, if we align with something that's bigger than us as individuals, now my way, if you like, is meditation. You know, when we meditate, we get in conscious contact, so to speak, with something bigger than us. However you want to define that, whatever that mystery means to you, that's up to you. But if we get in contact with that, it changes us. And the paradox is that we're not doing anything, we're actually letting go. We're letting go into something that's already there. There's a Zen proverb, you know, um, you already are that which you seek to become. You just have to realise it. So that's our practice. And my advice to everybody, and, and I'm talking to, you know, friends here who are on, on this path, I know that. We're all, you know, within this network, there's a lot of like minds in this room, which is great. So, if we embrace something, a discipline, a wholesome discipline, where we allow ourselves to get out of the way, because we connect with ourselves then at a much deeper level. Now, in terms of happiness, there's a lot of stuff that gives us fleeting happiness. You know, we seek for all the things of the world. It's known as fool's gold, ultimately. When you get on a spiritual path, you come to realize that, yeah, it's all well and good, but we can get lost in the pursuit of happiness. Equating happiness with things outside of us, you know, a new car, more holidays, you know, 
perfect partner, whatever it might be, you know. But if we go for something within us and discover who we are, then everything changes. Everything changes. But that's a discipline and it takes courage. So I would say that in terms of uh, relating with other people, we first have to got, got to build a better relationship with ourselves. It begins with me, it begins here and now. If I hear my shit from the past, I'm not going to project it out over. If I've got wounds from my childhood, if I've got unresolved anger issues and all the rest of it, I'm going to project them out. You know, other people are going to be affected by it. But as I hear that stuff, I can stand next to somebody at the bus stop and not say a word and will benefit from that emanation. There's a really good book, you know, called The Maharishi Effect. And it, all these experiments were done around the world whereby people came in and um, just meditated together on things like peace and love, you know. And six months later, on every single estate, wherever they were, Bronx, wherever it was, hospital admissions had reduced, crime rates had come down. So it would seem that something profound happens when we get out of the way. We build this relationship with ourselves and we meet each other at a much, much, much deeper level when we go into silence together. So again, if there's anything to do, practice compassion in your workplace. You know, who's the person in your workplace who pushes your buttons the most? Embrace that person as your greatest teacher. You know, I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> Just keep doing your best. And then, in your family and friends, the, there are kindred spirits in this world that I feel very, you know, comfortable being alongside. It's not necessarily blood relatives, but our relations, you know, Ram Das once said, um, if you want to know how enlightened you are, go spend a week in the family. You know? So we all know that feeling. There are people who push our buttons, but they are our teachers. So if we embrace that, practice it on ourselves, practice it within our own families, within our workplace, cultivate our own inner spine. There is a place within us. It's there. It's already there. There is of peace and happiness and love and compassion. The more we embrace this place, the more then we'll just emanate our world. So, thank you. <laughs>